Hey guys, welcome back to Farm Buddy. If you are looking for Job in Pharmaco Vigilance or working in Pharmaco Vigilance Department, then understanding good Pharmaco Vigilance practices guidelines is key to success. So, let's learn the overview of good Pharmaco Vigilance practices. Good Pharmaco Vigilance practices are a set of measures drawn up to facilitate the performance of pharmacovigilance in the European Union EU. GVP apply to marketing authorization holders, the European Medicines Agency, EMA, and medicines regulatory authorities in EU member states. They cover medicines authorized centrally uh, via the agency as well as medicines authorized at national level. The guideline on GVP is divided into chapters that fall into two categories. Category 1, modules covering major pharmacovigilance processes, that is GVP modules 1 to 16, and Category 2 is product or population-specific considerations, which are available for vaccines, biological medicinal products, and the pediatric population. So when was these guidelines developed? GVP Guidelines was a key deliverable of the 2010 Pharmacovigilance legislation, which came into effect from July 2012, and this was the biggest change to the regulation of human medicines in the European Union EU since 1995. It had significant implications for applicants and holders of EU marketing authorizations, as well as for patients, healthcare professionals, and regulators. So what are good pharmacovigilance practices modules? GVP modules 1 to 16, which cover major pharmacovigilance processes and the development of this set of guidance. Remember the module numbers 11, 12, 13 and 14 stay void as their planned topics have been addressed by other guidance documents on the agency's website. Module 1 is about pharmacovigilance systems and their quality systems. Module 2 covers pharmacovigilance system master file. Module 3 is for pharmacovigilance inspections. Module 4 is for pharmacovigilance audits. Module 5 is risk management systems. Module 6 is about collection, management and submission of reports of suspected adverse reactions to medicinal products. Module 7 gives guidance about periodic safety update report, that is PSER. Module 8 is about post-authorization safety studies. Module 9 provides guidance about signal management. Module 10 is about additional monitoring. Module 15 covers safety communication. And Module 16 is about risk minimization measures, selection of tools and effectiveness indicators. Now let us learn why is GVP important? GVP is important due to four reasons. One, protecting patients by identifying and evaluating potential risks associated with medications. GVP helps to protect patients from adverse reactions. Two, promoting public health. Early identification and response to safety concerns allow for rapid intervention, minimizing the impact on public health. Three, improving patient care. GVP provides healthcare professionals with the information they need to make informed decisions about prescribing and administering medications. Four, facilitating research and development. GVP data can be used to identify areas for further research and development, leading to safer and more effective medications. GVP is critical in ensuring the safe and effective use of medications across the EU. By adhering to these guidelines, stakeholders can contribute to protecting patients, promoting public health, and fostering a thriving pharmaceutical landscape. As the field of medicine continues to evolve, GVP will remain essential in ensuring patients' continued safety and well-being. Hope this video has helped you to understand basic GVP module. You can watch Module 3 Pharmacovigilance Inspections in the link given in description. In the future video, we will deep dive in each module in details. If you like our learning video, please subscribe, like, and share this video in your WhatsApp group so all get benefited.
Thanks for watching.